are down here in the beautiful boardroom at Tourism London in the heart of downtown London at Dundas and Wellington, welcoming back to the show John Winston, the uh, General Manager of Tourism London. John, thanks for making the time for me today. And thanks for coming down. I'm glad you could uh, enjoy this uh, beautiful space. It, it's a gorgeous space and uh, it's always nice to have a chance to get out of the studio and, and do a little uh, on-location uh, recording, so I appreciate you making oh, the time for us. We're delighted to have you. Uh, you folks, of course, uh, you've been on the show before, and, and we've talked last year mm -hmm. about uh, the World Junior Bid. And a lot's happened since then, and tourism has been a big topic in London uh, over the last couple of weeks. So I wanted to sit down and chat with you again about what that means. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I want to ask you, when we talk about tourism and London, what kind of a brand, brand what kind of a uh, strategic goal uh, or goals, because I know there are several, yes. Do we really have set out for the city? Well, first of all, Sean, to put, to put it into perspective, we know that we're a second-tier destination. And we also know that we don't have a Niagara Falls and we don't have any major destination uh, attraction that will, that will bring masses of tourism to the city. So what we have done over the years is we've strategically developed London as a destination for major events. And to that event, uh, or to, uh, yeah, and so, so to that purpose, we have then, again, strategically created three business units. One being sports tourism that we've been running now for the last 17 years, which has proven to be extraordinarily successful. Uh, we also have work in partnership with the convention center to draw, uh, you know, major conventions into the, to the city of London. And we have strategically, we have uh, people located in Ottawa as well as in the GTA to help develop that business. And thirdly, over the last few years, we've just cr we've created a music and culture uh, initiative, which is again strategically relevant because music and culture generates a lot of traffic, but it also generates a very high yield uh, of traffic. Uh, the people who are in that sector, uh, who who uh, who work within that sector, or who enjoy that sector, spend twice as much as the average leisure traveler. So those are probably folks who are are here a couple days in advance of shows to get set up and everything. They're, they're dining in our restaurants. They're also taking the opportunity because they're in the entertainment sector themselves to take in entertainment offerings that we have in the city. Precisely. Uh, whether that's a show at the Grand or they're popping in to hear a band at Call the Office or whatever. And nobody ever questions the price. You know, if you're here to see the Eagles, for example, uh, that nobody asks what does it cost. They're here because they want to be here, and they don't they don't dicker on hotel pricing. Uh, you're absolutely right. The, the, the music and the culture traveler really, really enjoys what they're going to see and they're willing to pay for it. So, th so those three areas we have strategically developed and, and through sports tourism primarily at this stage, we have been able to create uh, London as a major destination for major events uh, from the, both the country and other parts of the world. Well, we had a major uh, announcement a week ago from Hockey Canada yes. that they're going to have their golf and gala uh, fundraiser here, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm super excited about. I'm sure you are too, because the last time you were on the show, we were talking about the World Junior bid. Yes. And we got a really strong indication from Tom Rennie, the president of Hockey Canada, that the bid was really solid and that we should try again. So is that on your agenda? Oh, let me tell you it is. We have tried three times, and in all three cases, we have tried to state the case that uh, that this event really belongs with communities like London, people who you know communities who support junior hockey. Bring it back to the roots. This is you know this this is our NHL. This is our Stanley Cup, and I think it was proven in uh, in, in uh, both Montreal and Toronto that you know it's it, the glitter uh, you know of a of a World Junior Hockey Championship isn't the same as a Stanley Cup championship. Yeah, it doesn't shine quite as bright Not uh, at all. particularly when you've got the Leafs off on a roll. Right. Um, hey, people are paying attention to the NHL, not to the That's right. It would be like us uh, wanting a Junior B tournament at the Budweiser. I mean, I don't think I think we'd get some attendance, but certainly not to the extent we would if it was a when it's the Memorial, Memorial Cup. Cup. Precisely. So we uh, were very cognizant of that, and when Hockey Canada contacted us to give consideration to hosting this event, all what they really want to do is showcase London to the rest of the hockey world in this country. And we're going to see close to 1,500 people from right across the right across the country coming to London, participating not only in the in the golfing but also this gala event which features the Order of Hockey which is an induction into the Hockey, into the hockey Canada Hall of Fame. So it, it will draw a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a tremendous uh, vibe 
and it's going to be televised on TSN nationally. So that opens up a, a whole new uh, area for us. And certainly helps put us on the national map as a hockey hotbed. And in addition to that, they've also given us an exhibition game, a world uh, uh, junior hockey exhibition game on the 20th of December between right, Czech and Canada. We get the Czech Republic versus Team Canada. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And of course, anytime Team Canada is playing, that's going to be a tremendous event. And I guarantee that it'll be a sellout at the Budweiser. So they're looking at that very carefully. And we're going to be hosting a number of Hockey Canada executives for this event. They're here to watch to see how we do this. We're going to have some surprises, uh, which we'll be announcing later later on in the month. But uh, well, we're going to make it special, and we're going to ensure that they understand that this is Hockey Town, that uh, we are supportive so so much of this of our junior hockey team, but junior hockey in general. I think we're going to put on a show for them. I think they're going to really enjoy it. Well, I'm looking forward to a media pass for that one. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that's not the only thing we've got on the go. The Juno bid is underway, and uh, yeah. I mean this comes on the heels of the success that was Country uh, Music Awards uh, right. the week that we had celebrating that. Uh, any update on the Juno bid? All I can say to you is there's been some controversy over it. Hamilton had stated that uh, they had won the bid, that they were asked to, uh, you know, to take on the show, but that is not true. Um, you know, that was refuted uh, the day that that came out. But we're, we're still waiting to see what the results are. Um, we are uh, we've been in contact with them on a reasonably regular basis. Uh, they've been investigating, looking at things in London. So at the end of the day, we don't know where it is, but certainly we're in the game and uh, we're hopeful something will occur. So, I mean, the, the briar, uh, the ice skating, uh, the hockey stuff, obviously on the sports side, we're doing great. Uh, the Country Music Awards, the Juno bid, uh, mm -hmm. certainly on the music side, we're doing great. Yes. Um, I'm going to throw a wrench into the works here for you because council kind of threw a wrench into the works here for yes. you uh, about a week or so ago. One of the things that came up that doesn't seem to fit anywhere in the strategic priorities and in, in the, the segments that we have is this international plowing match bid. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to quickly ask your thoughts on that. Um, mm -hmm. We've heard folks, uh, particularly some folks from Middlesex County, a uh, Thames Centre councillor who said, hey, this is rural, leave it for us, we'll take care of, it, of these kind of things, it doesn't belong in London. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some logistics challenges if we were to even go ahead and put a bid in on this. Um, that's what we've heard at council. I know you actually appeared uh, at the uh, council committee that was hearing about this. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, simply put, I think we really have to take a look at what are our strategic priorities. Clearly, I don't think uh, that's a strategic priority in, in the London plan. I don't think it's clearly not a strategic priority of Tourism London. And really the most important thing is that we are not equipped nor do we exercise the appropriate professionalism or due diligence to understand the value proposition of an event of this magnitude. This is a very complex event. It takes years of preparation and it takes an agricultural knowledge and, it and leadership in order for an event like this to be successful. There are certain financial requirements, there are certain uh, uh, agricultural requirements, technical requirements that have to be addressed. Uh, you're talking a very complex, very difficult project that, that, that we as a community, in, in my view, we just don't have that. Now I know that there was, a, uh, there was a, uh, an appeal to have uh, you know, the administration prepare a bid. Uh, I have, as I've said to committee, I don't know of anyone or any department in the City of London that has that capability and capacity. It will require resources. It will require a, a tremendous volunteer base. And it's, this is a rural volunteer base that we're looking at, not an urban uh, volunteer base. And, and that's in the range of 1,000 to 1,500 people. So when you add all of these issues up and know that you know, you're really starting uh, you know, from square one, as opposed to having a one or two uh, you know, years of knowledge ahead of you, I just don't understand why we're pursuing this to any to, to the degree that some people like to see it happen. And uh, I think you have, look at the look at it logically and look at it uh, realistically. There are there are financial considerations, there are logistical considerations, and there there is a knowledge base that we, we as a city don't really have. So would it be fair to say this is a case of instead of trying to be everything to everyone, we should just focus on doing what we do well, really well? Absolutely. Understand your core business. We understand our core business and we will stay within our core business. And the city should understand that as well. Well, we are going to pick up this discussion when we come back with Thames Centre Councillor Kelly Elliott. Uh, so we will be right back with more on LDN ONT TV here on Rogers right after this.